In this lesson, we want to talk about trigonometric functions of acute angles, and also we'll look at co-function identities. So previously, we used angles in standard position to define the six trigonometric functions. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to define our six trigonometric functions as ratios of the lengths of the sides of right triangles. So we're going to kick things off by looking at an acute angle in standard position. This is something we've already seen. So we've seen this diagram before. So this acute angle here, this angle theta, is in standard position. Okay, And we've just picked a point on the terminal side. We're going to call it x, y. That's our point. But again, this has actual coordinates. In this case, it would be 8, 8. Okay, But we're just going to refer to it as x, y. Now, generically, we know that this distance from here to here can be represented by just saying the letter y. Okay, Because this right here is y. And down here, this coordinate is going to be 0, right? because we're on the x-axis. So I could take y and subtract away 0, and I would get y. So that's my distance for this vertical leg here of this right triangle that we formed. Then this horizontal distance from here to here, remember, this is a coordinate of x. Okay, This is a coordinate of x. And this is a coordinate of 0. So really, I could do x minus 0 and just say that the distance from there to there, we could say this is x. Okay. And then from here to here, let me highlight this, from here to here, we know that is the hypotenuse, right? So we call this R, we call this R, and we'll get more into that as we progress through the course in terms of why we call it R. For right now, we just call it R, okay? So we've already defined the six trigonometric functions using these letters, right? So we've said that the sine of theta is Y over R. We've said that the cosine of theta is x over r. We said that the tangent of theta is y over x. And then using the reciprocal identities, we can get the three remaining ones. So the cosecant, the cosecant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of this, which is r over y. And keep in mind, if your denominator ends up being zero, okay, it's undefined. So I'm not going to write that, but y can't be zero there. Then here you would have the secant of theta, okay, and this would be r over x. And then lastly, you'd have your cotangent of theta, which is going to be x over y. Okay, so let's explore a different way to look at this now. So instead of calling this guy y, okay, we're going to refer to it as opposite because it's opposite of this angle here, okay? Now, what you want to pay attention to is where this guy is because in this case, this is the opposite side. But if I change the angle up, if I was measuring this angle here, well, then the opposite side would now be here. So you got to pay close attention to this. I'll show you some examples where we switch things up and the answers are going to change. So you got to keep in mind where the opposite side is. So this guy is opposite of your angle theta. And then this guy right here is adjacent to it. OK, and then, of course, the hypotenuse stays the same. The hypotenuse is always opposite of your right angle, your 90 degree angle. OK, so what we can do now is say that, OK, since this was y and this was x before and this was r, well, if we have sine of theta, OK, we said before this was y over r, y over r. Now we're going to say it's what? Well, y is the opposite. So I'm going to put OPP for opposite. And this, again, is the measure of that. So the length that you're given. And then you have your R, your hypotenuse. So I'm going to put HYP for hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse, OK? And I'll give you a mnemonic device for this in just a moment, the SOHCAHTOA. So then you have your cosine of theta, OK? This is X over R. Or in terms of this, it's the adjacent, OK? The adjacent over the hypotenuse, OK? And then you have your tangent of theta, which is going to be what? It's Y over X, which is your opposite, OK? Your opposite over your adjacent over your adjacent. And then, of course, you can flip these guys and you can get your cosecant of theta. So your cosecant of theta, and I'm going to run out of room here. So let me actually copy this real quick. And let's go to a fresh sheet and just paste this in. So we have more room. So then I can say that cosecant of theta, which is the reciprocal of this, is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite, and then your secant of theta, which is the reciprocal of this, would be your hypotenuse over your adjacent. And then lastly, your cotangent of theta is going to be the adjacent over your opposite. Okay, so how do we remember this? 
Well, recall when you work with something like the order of operations, you have your PEMDAS, right? Your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Well, you have a similar mnemonic device here. It's the so katoa, okay? So the so ka toa, okay? So the S stands for sine, the C stands for cosine, and the T stands for tangent. Okay, so this is pretty much what everybody uses to remember these guys. So S for sine, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. C for cosine, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. The T for tangent, the opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. So this is something you want to write down and think about constantly until you have it memorized. It's going to save you a lot of time. And then, of course, if you know your reciprocal identities, it's very easy to get the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent by just flipping guys. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So with this guy right here, we're just going to find the six trigonometric functions. So let me just write them out. We want sine of theta, cosine of theta, and let's just do tangent of theta for right now. We know we can get the other three by just flipping these guys, okay? So what is sine of theta? Again, let me go back to the so ka toa, okay? So sine of theta, it's y over r, but let's think about it in terms of this. We're going to say opposite, so opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Cosine of theta, we're going to do adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of theta, we're going to do the opposite, the opposite over the adjacent, okay? So what's the opposite here? What's the hypotenuse? What's the adjacent? So we know that across from the right angle, okay, which is the longest side of a right triangle, is your hypotenuse, okay? So this is the hypotenuse right here, okay? And if you're confused about these things when you first start, go ahead and take the time to label things, figure out where everything is. So this guy right here is adjacent. This is your angle here, theta, okay? And I made that terribly. So this is your angle here, theta. This guy is adjacent to this, okay, or next to it. So this is going to be your adjacent, your adjacent. And then opposite of this, you're going to have this guy right here. So this is your opposite. Once you've figured this out, you're just plugging things in and you're done, okay? That's all you need to do. So what is the opposite? It's 2. What is the hypotenuse? It's 2 times square root of 5. Well, of course, you want to rationalize the denominator there. Let me just kind of scooch this down a little bit. So we have some room. So I'm going to multiply this by square root of 5 over square root of 5. The 2s are going to cancel. So I'm going to have the square root of 5 over square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. Okay, so that's my sine of theta. My cosine of theta is the adjacent, okay, which is 4, over the hypotenuse, which is 2 times square root of 5. The 4 and the 2 would cancel to 2 up there. So again, you're just going to multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. And what does that give me? Well, 2 times square root of 5, 2 times square root of 5 over square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. So the last one down here, we have the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is 2, and the adjacent is 4, so this is 1 half. Now we can flip these guys again and figure out our other ones. So let me erase this. All right, so for the cosecant of theta, Remember, that's the reciprocal of this guy, the sine of theta, okay? So I'm going to use the one before we rationalize the denominator to make it easy. So 2 times square root of 5 over 2. I just took this guy right here, okay, and I flipped it. That's all I'm doing. You can flip this guy too, but then you have to rationalize the denominator again. It's just double work, okay? So we've already done that. So cancel this with this. You just get the square root of 5. Then the next one, we would have the secant of theta, okay? And that would give me what? the secant of theta would be the reciprocal of your cosine of theta. So again, take the one before we rationalize the denominator. And I'm just going to say this is the square root of 5 over 2. And nothing really else you can do with that. So lastly, I'm going to flip the tangent of theta, okay, to get the cotangent of theta. And so if I flip one half, I just get 2 over 1 or 2. All right, so let's look at another example. We're going to have the same right triangle, but now we're going to change the angle. So before, our theta was here, okay? So we were talking about in reference to that angle. Now the angle has changed, okay? So this is our angle now. And so this guy right here now is the adjacent, okay? So this is the adjacent. And this is still the hypotenuse. That is not going to change because it's always across from the 90 degree angle or the right angle. And now if you look opposite of this, this is gonna be this side over here, okay? So we've got our adjacent, our hypotenuse, and our opposite. So our sine of theta, again, 
So, S O H. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, what's the opposite? It's 4. What's the hypotenuse? It's 2 times the square root of 5. You do need to rationalize the denominator here. So, let me cancel this with this and get a 2 here. Okay. So, 2 over the square root of 5. So, this is multiplying by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. And you're going to get 2 times the square root of 5 over 5. Now, I want you to notice something. Sine of theta here is the same as cosine of theta here. Okay. We're going to talk more about this in a moment, but I just want you to notice that. All right. So, I can flip this guy to get my cosecant of theta. Okay. Let's just do that now. And I'm going to start with it in this form, and I'm going to say this is the square root of 5 over 2. Okay. Let's erase this. So, the next one I want, and I'm just going to tighten this down so we kind of make that a little bit neater. So, let's move this down a little bit. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do, the next one I'm going to do is going to be my cosine of theta, okay? My cosine of theta. Again, this is the ka part of this. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So where is the adjacent? That's two. What's the hypotenuse? It's two times the square root of five. Before I rationalize the denominator, let's cancel this with this and put a one up here. So this is times the square root of five over the square root of five. And this gives me the square root of 5 over 5, okay? Now, I want you to notice that the cosine of theta here, okay, with this angle up there, is the same as the sine of theta here, okay, with the angle here. Again, we'll talk more about this in a moment. So, let me flip this guy right here before we rationalize the denominator. The secant of theta is going to be the square root of 5, okay, over 1, but just square root of 5. So, let's just kind of tighten this down a little bit so we don't have stuff all over the place. So, let's move this down. And then lastly, we're going to have our tangent of theta and then our cotangent of theta, okay? So what's the tangent of theta? That's the TOA part, right? So T-O-A, opposite over adjacent. So the opposite here, and I erase this, I apologize, this is the opposite here. Opposite is 4, adjacent is 2. So 4 over 2 or 2, okay? And if I flip this guy, remember, if you're flipping a non-fraction number or a whole number or integer, if you want to think about it that way, you just write the number over one and then flip it, right? So it would be one half. So this is one half. And again, if I look at the tangent of theta here, it's going to match the cotangent of theta here. So the tangent of theta here is a half and the cotangent of theta here is two. Those guys are flipped. So now the tangent of theta is two and the cotangent of theta is one half. So this is going to lead us to an important result. And we're going to talk now about something called cofunctions. So to talk about these cofunction identities, at least the first time you see them, it can be a little bit challenging to understand. So just stay with me for a moment. I'm going to show you when you get to the examples, they're very, very easy to figure out. Okay. So even if you don't fully understand the concept, you can work the problems very, very easily. So the first thing is that we noticed that the sine of theta from the first example was equal to the cosine of theta from the second example. So I have the same triangle here. I've just marked it with different letters. There's no actual numbers here, okay? So we have this lowercase a, this lowercase b, and the lowercase c that's representing the lengths of the sides here, okay? So if we wanted, let's say we had this measure of angle a. So this is angle a. This is what we used in the first scenario. If we wanted sine of a here, okay? If we wanted sine of a, well, what is this going to be? Well, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Your opposite here is the lowercase a. Your hypotenuse here is lowercase c, okay? And then if you wanted the cosine, okay, of b now, okay, of b, so I'm changing the angle up, I'm here now, you're going to notice that's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a over c. And again, lowercase a, lowercase c. Because now this is your adjacent, okay, and this is still your hypotenuse. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And you'll notice that, again, your sine of theta is the square root of 5 over 5. This is the first example where this is our angle. In the second example, the cosine of theta, here's our angle here, is square root of 5 over 5. So this relationship is always going to be true for the two acute angles of a right triangle. Okay, so since the sum of the three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees, and our angle C here, remember this is a right angle, it's exactly 90 degrees. So that means because the sum of all three angles is 180 degrees, the sum of the measures of angles B and A is going to be 90 degrees, right? These are complementary angles. We've talked about this before. If they sum to 90 degrees, two angles, they're complementary angles. So because these two angles, A and B, are complementary, 
and our sine of a is equal to our cosine of b, we say the function sine and cosine are cofunctions. We also say that tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. And then we can say secant and cosecant are cofunctions as well. And if you want to go back, if you look at the tangent of theta here, it's a half. And if you look at the cotangent of theta here, it's a half. Okay. If you look at the cosecant of theta here, it's square root of five. And if you look at the secant of theta here, it's square root of five. So how can we use this for practice problems? These are your cofunction identities. You just need to memorize them. It's something you're just going to plug into. So your sine of your angle A is equal to your cosine of 90 degrees minus your angle A. So for example, if it was sine of 50 degrees, well, you would just say this is equal to cosine of, let me make this a little bit better. So cosine of what? Well, you would say 90 degrees minus 50 degrees, that's 40 degrees, okay? And you can punch this up on a calculator and you see that those are the same. Same deal with cosine of A and sine of 90 degrees minus A, secant of A and cosecant of 90 degrees minus A, so on and so forth. You can copy these down. But basically, if we look at a problem like this, the cosine of 48 degrees, and we want to write it in terms of its cofunction, well, again, you just say, well, this is going to be equal to the sine of you take 90 degrees, 90 degrees minus the measure here, which is 48 degrees, okay? And what's 90 degrees minus 48 degrees? Well, it's gonna be 42 degrees, okay? So we can say cosine of 48 degrees is equal to sine of 42 degrees, okay? So this number here and this number here, those guys, because these are, again, complementary angles, they have to add up to 90 degrees. So that's what you want to make sure of. And then make sure your cofunction is there. So cosine and sine, tangent and cosangent, secant and cosecant, so on and so forth. Let's do another one. So we have the tangent of 11 degrees. So again, I would do cotangent, okay, of 90 degrees minus 11 degrees. 90 minus 11 is going to be 79. So this would be cotangent, okay, of 79 degrees there. So the tangent of 11 degrees is equal to the cotangent of 79 degrees. Again, you want to check to make sure that this plus this is going to give you 90 degrees. Okay, so let's look at an example that involves solving equations using cofunction identities. For this guy right here, we're going to find one solution for the equation, okay? And we're going to assume all the angles involved are acute angles. So you'll see a problem like this or a few problems like this in this section. And solving it is very easy. Remember, I told you that this plus this, okay, is going to equal 90 degrees. So all I need to do is take the inside parts, the 2 times theta plus 20 degrees, and add this to the 3 times theta plus 5 degrees, and set this equal to 90 degrees, okay? I'm going to solve for theta, okay, my unknown angle measure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to combine like terms. So 20 degrees plus 5 degrees is 25 degrees. And 2 times theta plus three times theta would be five times theta. So five times theta plus 25 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so just like I'm solving an equation, just like if I had X there, I wanna isolate this guy. So I want this by itself. So how do I do that? I'm going to first subtract 25 degrees away from each side of the equation. So this is gonna be gone. I'll have five times theta is equal to, what's 90 degrees minus 25 degrees? it's going to be 65 degrees, okay? So to wrap this up, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 5 so that I can isolate theta. And I'll say that theta is equal to 65 divided by 5 is 13. And of course, you have degrees there for the units. So I would say theta is equal to 13 degrees. Now, if you want to check this, all you would do is plug in. So 2 times 13 degrees is 26 degrees. 26 degrees plus 20 degrees is 46 degrees. So sine of 46 degrees is equal to cosine of what? Three times 13 degrees is 39 degrees. 39 degrees plus five degrees is 44 degrees. So is this true? Yes, it is, right? Sine of 46 degrees is equal to cosine of 44 degrees. Again, this plus this has got to be 90 degrees. And of course you have your sine and cosine. 